Hi everyone, welcome to IM Magazine. I'm Jennifer Dozer. I'm here with Nancy Jo Kemper, who's running for the sixth congressional seat of Kentucky for Congress. Yes. Exciting. It is. It's been a learning experience. <laughs> I bet. I and, bet. Uh, most of the time, mm -hmm. fairly energizing. Oh, I'm sure. So. Probably lots to learn. Indeed. I had uh, no knowledge with which to begin, other than the fact that I've been involved on the periphery of political activity for many years. Uh, sure. So I've watched other politicians do it, and I thought, well, it doesn't look too hard. <laughs> I think I can do That's this. That's what we all think, and then you get into it, and it's... Actually, it isn't too hard. No, really? It really isn't. It's just time-consuming, sure. and it takes as much of your passion and heart as you can give to it. Oh, I'm sure. And if you're not willing to do that, then mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, it becomes really a draining kind of activity. Oh, I can only imagine. Now, Nancy, what's one word that would describe Nancy Jo in this stage of your life? Hmm. I would say feisty. Right. That's a good word. It's <laughs> a very good word. <laughs> It's actually what I've always been. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. That's in some good. sense, when you, uh, you know, we were initially talking about the interview, mm -hmm. that's the word that uh, a friend of mine uh, plastered on me some years ago. And, really? And I think it fits. Well, it's a very, it's a compliment. Well, I really, when I do something, mm -hmm. I do it uh, all the way. Right. Uh, never halfway. Mm -hmm. I'm always prepared for what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. I always put uh, as much of my intelligence as I can dredge up mm -hmm. into doing the task. I'm always prepared for mm -hmm. uh, whatever it is that I may be about to, uh, to speak about. Mm -hmm. um, and I try to bring to it uh, some degree of uh, compassion and mm -hmm. knowledge of other people and what their lives are like. Um, so it can't be uh, just a uh, routine activity. Right. Um, to to sink into a routine to me is is utter boredom. Yes, I agree, one hundred percent. That's why I do what I do because <laughs> you, you never know what's going to happen. That's yeah. right. <laughs> now, how would you describe Nancy Joe, say, thirty, thirty-five years ago? Uh, I was struggling, but I, I I figured I could do it. Right. I've always assumed that whatever the situation I found myself in, that I could survive, that I could make something go. Right. I mean, um, when I was uh, quite young, um, not quite 40, mm -hmm. and my children were five and two, mm -hmm. uh, seven and two, I take that back, I, I got divorced, and I'm a minister, and mm -hmm. so this was very early in, in the sort of history of women being uh, ministers and mm -hmm. being senior ministers sure. of churches. Um, and so there was this glass ceiling that was there and I figured I'm female, mm -hmm. I'm going to be divorced, and I have two little children, three strikes, That's, and my yeah. career may be over. Right. So what am I going to do now? Because mm -hmm. this is what I know how to do, it's what I've been trained to do, it's uh, what I, my skills, where my skills are, where my heart is. Mm -hmm. It's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, fortunately, the times changed significantly enough that there were congregations that said, yeah, you know, maybe a woman minister really would be a good thing for us and right. be a good fit for our congregation. And uh, I spent about six months working at uh, a social justice agency mm -hmm. for the denomination, the United Church of Christ, mm -hmm. in that interval between the time that I resigned from my congregation and then took the new position. Mm -hmm. um, and the new position was with a blue-collar congregation who you might expect would have tons of prejudice against sure. women. Uh, many first and second generation German families uh, really? in St. Louis, mm -hmm. uh, active union workers, um, but they were bright people and mm -hmm. their children uh, were going on to college and beyond. Um, they'd had some really talented uh, male pastors mm -hmm. uh, before I arrived who had begun to work on them in terms of their inclusive language and, mm -hmm. 
and they were ready for all of this, and right. they, they liked it. They liked the idea. And in fact, the congregation back in the 1940s had even had a Ku Klux Klan cross burned on the front lawn of that church oh, wow. because they were active in race relations in the 1940s, Right. Uh, which was quite unusual. So it was an interesting congregation, let's put it that way. Oh, but they took me in, mm -hmm. knowing that I uh, would need support, mm -hmm. and uh, somebody said, well, what do we do if you need to go out in the middle of the night and you've got those two children? And another member of the church popped up and said, well, she's not the only minister here. Right. That's uh, right. <laughs> The word minister means servant, and we're all called to be in ministry, and so therefore we will get a list of the people who she can call, and at a moment's notice we will just go to her house if she needs to go out in the middle of the night to see about one of our members. And that happened twice in the eight years I was in that church, mm -hmm. and, it ha and the, exactly as we had planned, mm -hmm. I didn't have to go through a long list of people. I called one person, yes, I'll be right there. That's incredible. And they did that. And then they would do other nice things. They took my children out to do Christmas shopping for me because they oh. knew that their daddy wasn't there right. and wasn't involved. Um, uh, also, in the, the initial negotiating part of uh, the contract, uh, one member of the church stood up and said, well, I don't believe that she ought to have four weeks vacation if she's starting in January and this summer shouldn't have four weeks. You have to work for a whole year before you get any vacation. vacation. And another member of the church stood up and said, um, aren't you a member of the electricians union? Mm -hmm. And the fellow said, yes. And the, the other fellow said, well, she's just changing. Do you lose your vacation if you change shops? And he said, no. And she just changing shops. Right. She gets her vacation. Right. <laughs> well, how wonderful. Uh, so they were really interesting, great people. Right. Uh, it's over in St. Louis and probably one of the best congregations that I was ever privileged to serve. That's um, amazing. And, uh, I was their senior minister with a male associate and mm -hmm. big staff. and It was a lovely group of people. Well, now, how did you get from being the senior minister in St. Louis to being a candidate for Congress in Kentucky. Interesting progression. Um, in my earlier years, I'd been pretty active in civil rights and peace mm -hmm. work uh, in the Vietnam era, and then in um, um, the Equal Rights Amendment when I uh, lived in Illinois mm -hmm. before I was divorced. So the career continued. Um, I went to uh, be senior minister of a church for a while in mm -hmm. Toledo, Ohio. It was, again, a slightly larger church, and it was a white-collar congregation of professional people. Um, and I just happened to see an advertisement in the back of a magazine that's put out for progressive Christians, thinking Christians, uh, called the Christian Century, mm -hmm. that was advertising for the Kentucky Council of Churches, an ecumenical role, and I'd always been involved in bringing people together in ministerial associations across denominational lines, working together in community projects. And I thought, you know, this might be up my alley. And my mother was aging. She lives in Lexington, or lived oh. in Lexington at the time, and mm -hmm. I have a sister and nieces, and, and um, I thought, well, this would be a chance as a single person to get back home mm -hmm. and have a little bit better support structure Right. Um, and uh, so I applied for the job, and about 70 others did as well, mm -hmm. but managed to, uh, to win the position. Mm -hmm. and it was a perfect fit. It really was a, a wonderful kind of organization for me to work with. Um, interestingly, Andy Barr, in his negative attack ads, has been calling it an ultra-liberal organization. He doesn't even say it was a religious organization. Right. It is the furthest thing from being an ultra-liberal organization right. that, that one could imagine. Yeah. He, he probably wouldn't know a conservative organization if he saw one so. at this yeah. point. Uh, but um, when you have uh, 11 different denominations, including Roman Catholics and Methodists and Cumberland Presbyterians and Presbyterians and Episcopalians and Methodists and, mm -hmm. and Disciples of Christ and the AME and the CME and all of these traditions bringing together, it's not going to be uh, no. very liberal. No, not at all. And secondly, and he's also accusing me of, of uh, advocating certain things. Mm -hmm. Well, I did so only at the direction of my board. Right. They had to approve unanimously any position that we were going to take. Sure. And if I was going to speak on it, then I had to know pretty clearly what their position was. Right. Um, and I was pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of thing I like. I've been always engaged with the, the communities around me and mm -hmm. on social justice issues. So it was right up my alley. Uh, but whatever I said, 
if it didn't comply with their understanding mm -hmm. of what the position of the organization had been and a unanimous decision, mm -hmm. then I could have been fired. Sure. So yeah. it was not my position. It was the Council of Churches, sure. of which the Episcopal Church is a very active member, and Andy Barr's an Episcopalian. So mm -hmm. guess what? There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Right. Uh, it's a little um, troubling, but th that kind of prepared me for almost, it's been almost two, dec uh, two decades working for the Council of Churches. Right. In, uh, working in a, an array of issues, public policy issues, mm -hmm. that I believe prepared me to be a good representative of the people. That i got a quick mind, I can address all of these kinds of, of concerns that people have. Now, how are we going to protect this planet and so that it keeps producing and can be available for our children and grandchildren? What do we do about criminal justice reform mm -hmm. so that people don't spend their lives uh, forever? just right. rotting away in a prison but have some chance of redemption, you know? That's sure. a fairly Christian notion. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I believe um, that Jesus thought that <laughs> was kind of important to give people second chances. Right. And how do we help them become better people sure. rather than worse people while they're in jail? Absolutely. Uh, how can we help people who are feeling so desperate that the mm -hmm. only thing they can do is turn to drugs? Right. Um, and that's can, a huge problem now. It is an enormous problem. Yeah. How can we help uh, our kids be prepared for learning and to be excited about learning and then go through a schooling process that's not torture, right. but that uh, evokes their best talents and their interests and their skills for an ever-changing world and an economy. It's not going to stay the same as it was right. 50 years ago. Right. It's entirely different. Right. Uh, and uh, you know, we cannot remain stuck in a, a pre-technological age, mm -hmm. uh, or in a segregated world. Right. Thank goodness, we've got all this diversity. That's and our inclusion is much better than it ever was. It's not complete. Right. There's still ways in which we discriminate terribly against one another oh, against absolutely. different people. But it's such a strength mm -hmm. of our nation that we can can look at different people as a gift to us mm -hmm. and their differences, not as something that's attacking my way of life Absolutely. or somebody else's way of life just because they're different. Absolutely. Now, was there one defining answer? About like, when I decided to do this? Yes, yeah, like, oh, I'm, I'm going to do this. Or was it, you know? <laughs> well, sort of, I guess. I mean, I, I was pretty upset with the uh, election as a uh, after the, the gubernatorial election in November mm -hmm. 2015. And I asked uh, around uh, who's going to run for the United mm -hmm. States Senate and for the United States House of Representatives because nobody had come forward. Mm -hmm. And all of these kind of young, rising political stars had been defeated and everybody mm -hmm. was just sinking away. Sure. This is terrible. Mm -hmm. The people need a representative. Right. And uh, I thought, well, you know, uh, I've got the energy, I've got the health, uh, my mind still works pretty well, uh, I've got a, a broad base of knowledge, I understand human beings, you can't be a minister for 50 years and not have seen, every, seen and heard everything that a human being can do or, Absolutely. or uh, that they've experienced mm -hmm. uh, without some degree of sympathy and uh, compassion for them and that that is the kind of skill that's needed mm -hmm. right now that people are hungry mm -hmm. for somebody that's not a career politician mm -hmm. or somebody that's not in this for their own self uh, advancement they're starved for someone who will represent them, not the corporations in Washington. Right. Uh, and I thought, you know, I think my profile is kind of right. So I sat on it for a while, prayed about it, um, talked to a number of people, including Ben Chandler, who had held the seat before. He's a good mm -hmm. friend. Crit Lou Allen, who had been lieutenant governor, is a member of my congregation. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a, a few others. Um, I've got a longtime friend that's been a congressman from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I said, am I crazy? <laughs> you know, is this a really crazy right. thing? Because I'm semi-retired. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not young. Uh, and they all kind of said, no, you know, there are lots older people in Congress oh, sure. than you. Sure. And uh, you're, n you're never old. Uh, I mean, age is a number and old is an attitude, and I don't right. think I've ever been old in my life, maybe too juvenile. Sure. <laughs> so, 
a problem. I understand that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, you know, so I thought about it and thought about it until about the 10th of January my congregation was meeting for a kind of first gathering of fellowship time after uh, Christmas and they were discussing the annual budget and what was coming in the year ahead and I said, you know, I think I need to tell you something. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking about something for a long time, and I just that morning was the morning that I decided I was really going to do it. Right. And I said I have decided that basically running for Congress is an extension of everything I've always done, mm -hmm. which is to try to um, heal what's broken in people's lives. Mm -hmm. It's a line I use a lot uh, to fix what's what's not working in institutions, mm -hmm. uh, whether they're churches or public interest organizations or communities, mm -hmm. and, and to create communities of care and hope. And at its best, I think that's what government is about. It's about healing what's, what's broken in, in, in our society. It's Absolutely. about mending what's torn. And, right. and it's about uh, creating, again, a future and a hope. Because mm -hmm. we're always evolving. We're never going to be static. Oh, sure. We better be evolving. Right. Or, or we're just falling backwards. Right. So. I said, I think maybe that this is what I really ought to do. Mm -hmm. and I'm asking your blessing to to do this. I mm -hmm. said, I'll continue here at the little congregation. It's itty bitty, mm -hmm. uh, about 30 members, and doesn't take a lot of my work. It was just sort of uh, something that was keeping me busy sure. in my semi-retirement mm -hmm. years. Got a 96-year-old member of the church who's oh. fairly prominent. Um, former C uh, CEO of Keeneland, he says, I think you were just bored. Oh. So maybe, maybe I was. Maybe so. But it, boredom is about this feeling as well that that things need to change mm -hmm. and that we're in a stuck place. Mm -hmm. And as I look at our country, I felt like we're just in a stuck place. Mm -hmm. And we need to change to a different kind of individual who is running for politics for a political office, and that it ought to be, we ought to have politics we can be proud of. I agree. And, and this has been so awful. Mm -hmm. This whole campaign, as I watched those Republican candidates for president get winnowed out, and just the rhetoric between them, and, and the ongoing ugly, vile, uh, malicious, um, xenophobic, racist, uh, misogynist comments coming from Donald Trump, and that he should triumph out of that Republican group to be the candidate for the highest office in this land, a, a, an office that we revere and respect, uh, to have someone of that caliber lacking in, in character to be the candidate uh, meant that there was something underneath that that, that oh. needed to be addressed Absolutely. By, uh, and that was not being addressed. Mm -hmm. Um, and I could not stand to let him, to see him continue, mm -hmm. nor can I stand to see uh, eight more years of Republican control of Congress mm -hmm. where nothing gets accomplished. And we aren't addressing these problems mm -hmm. of why people feel left behind, why they feel like they can't get ahead. Right. I talk a lot. That's okay. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it's good for me. <laughs> and it's good in a politician as well. Well, good. It is. Now, Nancy, what would you say to all the single parents that were you 30 years ago right. that are struggling? Because I see them every day. Of course. How, what words would you this tell them? This too shall pass. Okay. And that your children are your best gift mm -hmm. and greatest treasure and that they should be the priority of your life. Mm -hmm. um, and that uh, if that means all of you have to make some sacrifices, financially in order to be centered on each other and taking care of each other, that that's what's most important. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, you look to try to uh, do the things that you believe are going to be in the best interest of your family unit. Mm -hmm. um, that may mean moving, it may mean uh, uh, taking on a new challenge, it may mean uh, uh, sacrificing some things for yourself. Right. Uh, for the sake of your children, mm -hmm. uh, so that they can have a chance to get ahead. Right. Uh, I mean, I took money out of my retirement system that I'd had a little bit of, and that my ex-husband was suing to get half of, uh, which was just crazy. Um, mm -hmm. uh, 
but I took money out of it to buy my older daughter a cello. She's a very gifted cellist, mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, you know, I I couldn't afford to buy her a cello. I sold a, a nice bicycle I had. I sold two or three instruments that I had, mm -hmm. uh, and some other kinds of things in order to get her a really good instrument. Mm -hmm. Because for her to advance as a musician, she needed a good instrument, mm -hmm. and cellos aren't cheap. No. Uh, Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. And uh, to make sure that she had lessons. Right. Um, you know, so. Well, and that's what a good parent does. Right. Right. Yeah. And I found ways to squeeze and, and cut corners. And mm -hmm. um, uh, their grandmother on their father's side was a really good uh, manager of household finances and they continued to be involved in the children's lives even though their oh, son wasn't right. and uh, although they lived far away but they were always giving me good advice sending recipes about the things I could do that I'd have leftovers and, right. and uh, would extend and be fairly cheap. She had had um, three children and then her husband had had three children they were both widowed and then they had one of their own so they had seven children. Oh my goodness. And she even knew how many slices of bread there were in a loaf of bread. Yeah, and uh, and would parcel it out in order to figure out what the kids could have for lunch and how to extend lunches and right. you, know, you just learn to do things like that right. um, and make do. Um, so uh, a family, my family was always supportive and helpful mm -hmm. in a pinch, um, but family to me always comes first. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And my children have been my pride and joy. Um, right. As much as I've been able to accomplish other things, mm -hmm. they I think they always knew they came first. Oh, absolutely. And that's that's just so important. It reflects in their lives. Right. And they're both successful. They are. So that's a reflection back on you. Yeah. My older one is an uh, entrepreneur in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And uh, runs a, uh, she's, she's divorced and trying to figure out how she was going to make ends meet. So she thought up what she could do to earn money. Mm -hmm. And uh, she launched a house cleaning business. Good for her. And again, she borrowed a little money and she sent out over 5,000 uh, postcards to homeowners and businesses mm -hmm. offering these services. And then and she herself, like her father, uh, is a recovering alcoholic, although she spent far less time. Right. Um, it seems to be genetic. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, she hires uh, folks, women that have been in her AA chapters. Oh, how uh, wonderful. And she pays them $15 an hour. Wow. That's unheard of now. Of course it is. Wow. But she Good can, for her. But the business is thriving. Right. And she said, I can't stand it when people sit around and say, I can't figure out how to earn a living. She right. said, they're just not thinking. That's right. We all have gifts. Yeah, there are things you can do. Absolutely. You know, and no job is uh, beneath you and right. should ever be beneath you. Oh, I agree. You know, it, clean somebody's house. That's right. I've done pay that. Pretty, pay, people pay pretty good money for that. I, I've done that. Yeah. I've worked at McDonald's. I worked at the mall. I've right. <laughs> worked wherever I've had to. Right. Well, yeah. and I had to pick up a second job when my younger one was in college, and that's mm -hmm. where I started at this little country church. Okay. Uh, simultaneously with working with the Council of Churches because the salary wasn't great, it wasn't tremendous with the Council of Churches, it was, mm -hmm. was alright, right. uh, but uh, it wasn't sufficient to help my younger daughter get through a private uh, liberal arts college Oh, I can imagine. Uh, with uh, the financial aid that they were offering her. Mm -hmm. um, so we, I just picked up an extra job and then I've stayed because it was such a fun little place. Right. Well, good for you. Not many people have kind of a second career right. and have it fun. Right. Not many well, people and at that's all. That's the other question I ask myself about this. Mm -hmm. You know, am I healthy enough? Uh, do I have enough energy? Does my mind work still well enough? Uh, but can I have fun? Can right. I do this and enjoy the process right. and not be miserable at it? Right. Um, because uh, a couple of people that I talked to said, oh, it'll just drain you, <laughs> it'll leave you exhausted. And, I have yet to be really exhausted sure. uh, or what I call weary. Mm -hmm. A weariness is being so tired that you're ready to throw the towel in. Sure. You know? um, never that. I'm, I'm ready the next morning to get up and go at it again. Right. Well, good I might you. be tired at the end of the day. but. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a rough 
process. That is. Holy cow, you have to be tough and not light of heart. Right. And but it, being a minister is something like that too. Oh, if you absolutely. have a thin skin, you'll never survive. Right. Uh, because uh, people are always critical of uh, ministers, oh, and, and sure. I learned long ago what my home church pastor had said: you just have to have the hide of a rhinoceros and just let it roll off. And figure and and what one of my mentors said: try to figure out what's going on with the person underneath, right? Whatever it is that they are projecting on you, right? And and if you approach it with curiosity, mm -hmm. then it doesn't feel personal. Oh, absolutely. That's wise words, because right. it's true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I'm You're so welcome. excited for you. Thank you. I think this is just an amazing journey that you started on, and I think it's it going to be long and prosperous and good for our country and good for Kentucky. Thank you. We're we're optimistic that we've got a good chance to win. Uh, an incumbent uh, would not launch three attack. Ads on television if you were not seriously worried. Oh, I must tell you. Absolutely. And uh, in fact, uh, outward parameters would suggest that uh, that he would win by double digits. Right. But I felt all along that I had the right profile to mm -hmm. win this race. Right. Uh, and that people would respond. I had enough name recognition, enough kind of basic uh, connection with people. Mm -hmm that it would uh, benefit in the long run a political race sure. and, and turn out very positively. And then you get the political environment we're in, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. And it's just a bizarre. It's very bizarre. Very yes. bizarre, like yes. all year. Yeah. Um, any other year I might not have been able to do it, but this year was the right year. Right. Time to me. Politics is always about being the right person at the right time mm -hmm. for a particular vacancy. Right. And uh, you can't just decide, well, I'm going to do this. Well, no, there might be other good people already in the job that you want to leave there. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's so overwhelming. It is. For me, and I'm not the one that's even running. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> well, thank you so much for You're taking welcome. time out of your very busy schedule to talk You're with welcome. us and talk to the women who are our readers and viewers. And I know they'll be thrilled. Oh, good. And thank you for joining us. I'm Jennifer, and I am inspired. Thank you. Yes. And I am Nancy Jo, and my last name, Kemper, means champion, and I'd like to be your champion. Love it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.